Hello, my name is Shai. I want to show you some cool beginner level shortcuts, which will make you faster at modeling. And as we progress through the video, they will increase in difficulty slightly. They're all pretty basic shortcuts, nothing really advanced. This is my second time recording this. Last time I just closed the computer and lost the file. Our first tip is to use local axes. So if I rotate this cube, we might want to move it along coordinates that have been rotated the exact same way. So instead of using global coordinates like this, Z, X, and Y, we could use the local Z by grabbing and pressing Z once, and then again to move it along its local Z. This applies to the local X, local Y, and even the local X and Y all at once. We don't have to use the standard rotation either. Instead of rotating about a single axis, we can tap R twice to have the X and Y rotation correspond with your mouse movement. So here, all I'm doing is moving my mouse. Let's say we're happy with this rotation and we want to duplicate our mesh. Instead of doing a standard duplicate, which is Shift D, after we make our duplicate, we might want to change both of the objects at once. So this is a duplicated mesh. If I change one, it doesn't change the other. But if we use Alt D instead of the standard Shift D, we can change one object. In this case, I'm changing the original mesh and it applies to the duplicate as well. This is even true if you have tons of duplicates. Here I'm doing it with six other instances of my mesh, and it's a really useful way to make changes to a whole crowd of objects. In my case, I have a plane with a few subdivisions. If I want to inset every face individually, I don't want to do it manually like this. Instead, I will select every face I want to subdivide and tap I once and then twice to set it to individual inset. This is really useful for making extruding geometry, like buildings, for example. If I want to bevel this cube, but I go slightly too far, I have this overlap, which I really don't want. It breaks the geometry. To prevent this, I can toggle clamp overlap by tapping C. And now if I go to my max width of a bevel, it just snaps. So I can increase the segments. And because this geometry has overlapping edges, I can press A, M to merge vertices by distance. That basically merges all the vertices that overlap. If I want to make this single face its own object, I can tap P and then separate by selection. And now the mesh is a separate object from the original. Instead of going into the add menu and trying to use your cursor to select each object, it might be quicker to press M for mesh and Y for cylinder. I know these shortcuts because almost every selection has its own letter that's underlined. In this case, I can press C to add a cube. You're halfway there. Now we're ramping up the complexity just slightly. Don't worry though, they're really not that difficult. If I would like to change this cube into a cylinder, I could select all of these edges by holding down Alt, Control, and selecting one to select every edge in a loop that is lateral to this one. Here I can use that beveling trick that I mentioned earlier to clamp it and merge by distance. And now I have two shapes that are identical to a cylinder, even though one was a cube. Let's say we really like this shape and we want to light it, but instead of rotating our light by hand, we might want to use Shift T to aim it at the cursor. Then we can just point our cursor at the object and it'll do all of the aiming for us. Super photorealistic. In this example, we have a subdivided plane. If we want to select every face in between these two that I have selected now, you would hold shift and command and left click select. This selects an area that's defined by these two polygons. If we want to extrude each of these faces individually, we would bring up the extrude menu by holding alt and tapping E and then selecting extrude individual faces. Now, if we move our cursor, we can see that each face is going along its own normal. My next tip is about the pie menu in proportional editing. So once you're proportional editing, you might want to change your fall off. Instead of using this little setting over here, you might want to use shift O to get this pie menu and select any fall off you want. This is way quicker. If you want to showcase your beautiful models, you would use shift and alt Z to hide all of your overlays. This hides the grid, the axes, empties, cameras, everything that would distract you from the mesh. I use this all the time. It's a great way to visualize your model without any junk covering it. My next tip only applies to people who don't have a number pad. If that applies to you, you might be interested in the tilde key. It's basically a whole navigation tool set in one key. You can view selected. If I'm very far away from my origin, I can use the tilde key to recenter myself, or I could view the camera 
which I will use local Z to bring back. I can use tilde to quickly snap into it. I don't have a numpad, so it's really useful for me. You've made it to the last tip. To see it, we'll have to start a new file and view my custom default setup. So usually Blender's default cube is pretty useful, but for me, I use a sphere and a simpler lighting setup. I also have both a shader editor and a timeline in my bottom panels. On the top right, I have a secondary viewport. It's not really that important. If you're a Blender beginner and you like this video, I recommend subscribing because I'll keep posting informative videos. This video was aimed towards beginners, but I do make more advanced content too, so you can view that on my channel. Like I said, this is the second time I'm recording this, so I think I deserve a like for my dedication. Maybe this was a useful tutorial and you picked up a few shortcuts along the way. If so, I do hope you subscribe or like, and also that, uh-oh, misclicked.